Playing video games late at night affect my sleep. What games can help me calm down when I'm stressed? What are your thoughts on Roblox? How did you get into the video game journalism? What's the difference between Peggy 7 and Peggy 12? What are the most popular games right now? Which console is the best? What should you be aware of when playing video games? Hello. And welcome to this very special Zoom interview. I'm Mr. Fraser, and I'm the computing teacher at Ellsley Primary School in Brent. And I'm joined here by my wonderful digital leaders. Say hello, digital leaders. Hello. Hi. 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 And we're here today to interview Andy Robertson. Hello, Andy. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm really looking forward to this. So Andy is a video game journalist a digital well-being professional, the creator of the fantastic family video game database, taminggaming.com, and author of the new Taming Gaming book, which has just been released. Andy, thank you so much for allowing us to talk to you today. Hi, Andy. My question is, can playing video games late at night affect my sleep or mood? Um, there is some science that says that if you are looking at a screen close to bedtime, the blue light of the screen means that it triggers your brain to think it's morning. And that can mean that you kind of aren't getting ready to go to sleep and actually you're getting ready to wake up. Um, but if you use it in the right way, there are some games that can actually help you sleep. And I've got a list on the database of games that can help you feel a little bit calmer. And if we look down to this particular game I've got down here, that sometimes my kids have played before they go to bed. It's a game called Abzu, where you're just swimming underwater. So I think as long as you use them in the right way and it's not too near bedtime, games can actually help you sleep in a nice way. Hello, Andy Robertson. What can you learn from playing video games? That's a great question because I think a lot of people wouldn't really think, can I learn something from about a video game? But a lot of people think maybe they're just for fun. But as you can see here, what I've got on the database is a list of games that have been tagged as these are all good games to teach you something. And so as we go down the list of games here, you'll see there's all sorts of different topics. So this game here, Stormworks, you can learn how to build a boat so that it floats properly. And then you can go and help people at sea. Minecraft, I should think you all know, know about. You can do lots of things in there. Um, and then things like Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is quite complicated. Um, but if you play it in a simple mode, you can then fly over the real terrain and you could fly over your own town and see your own houses. So you kind of learn about where you are. And then some games let you make your own game. So Super Mario Maker is an example of that. You can make your own running and jumping platform game. So really, it's, it's whatever you want to learn, you can find a game to teach you that. In a, in a bit like how there's books to teach you anything. If you, if you know where to look, there's great games to teach you stuff too. Great question. Hey Andy, my question is, what games can help me calm down when I'm stressed? That's another good question. We just talked about you know games that might calm you down before bedtime. We've got another list of games on the database, which are about games that help you feel hopeful and happy and a bit lighter about life. And so these are games that either have a kind of a, a story that's quite positive or that you can kind of escape the day in or maybe just go, go somewhere where you're wandering around. Um, also, they're games that, that offer you sort of space to do something that's quite calming. So this game Teacup's quite interesting. You, you take on the role of this little mouse in a little village and you go around collecting herbs to make cups of tea to give to your friends which is quite a nice thing to do and people who've played it have said actually it doesn't make them feel less stressed about things so i'd suggest that's a really good one to try hi andy what are your thoughts on roblox and is it a good game for us to play yeah that's another great question because roblox is kind of an unusual game because it's not just one game it's obviously a collection of all sorts of games so the first thing is I think Roblox is good to play if you find a game you enjoy and that's kind of suitable for your age. So, it, you know, it's something that's fun. Um, on, the, on the database, we can look up particular Roblox games. So a, a popular game, as I'm sure you all know, is Adopt Me. So if we put Adopt in, we can then go to the, the database entry for Adopt Me. And one of the things I think is, is important to understand playing Roblox is what if you are spending money, what the money goes on. And so 
in this game on the database, we've got some details about, you know, how you get gifts and eggs, um, and also being aware of if there are any sort of scams where people may be trying to trick you out of the things that you've, you've earned. So that's, that's one thing to bear in mind. And also just to make sure that with your parents, you've got the right settings so that you know who you're talking to when you're playing the game. But once you've got that all in place, I think Roblox is really lovely because you get a chance to play with children from all over the world. Um, and the sort of games that I see in Roblox remind me of the games that I remember playing when I was your age in the playground. So I think it's great. Hi Andy, my question is, do you remember the first game you've played and what age were you that time? That's a great question. Uh, it was a long time ago because I'm, I'm about, well, I'm 47. So it was a long time ago. I was about eight and I played a game Oh, I was on holiday at the seaside and at the pier, actually this game behind me, do you know what this is? Pac-Man. Um, so I played that and I had to put 10p in to play it, um, but I had a really good time and I remember asking my mum for more and more 10p's and eventually she said, no, that's enough. Hi Andy, I was wondering what your best and worst game you played was. Well, I've played a lot of games, you know, and I think some are better than others. My, the, the games I don't like are ones that are really hard. Um, but I also remember when I was first, when I was perhaps your age, we had these games on our Atari. And you had a little bat going up either side and a ball you had to get. And you had a little dial that you had to, had to twist to move the bat. And on my one, the, the dial never worked properly. And so I was always getting frustrated with it. So I, that's probably the worst game I've played. And then my best, my favourite game, I could pick a lot of different ones, but I think Animal Crossing on the Switch is a good game. And I've been, I've been enjoying that because I play that with my kids um, and our family play it together when we have our own island. And so that's been nice to be able to go out and explore that world when we're a bit stuck inside at the moment. Hi Andy, how did you get into the video game journalism and what age were you when you started reviewing games? I, it was, for me, it was a hobby to start with. So I used to, had a, I had a blog about 15 years ago and I used to write about video games. And then I realized that if you write about video games like that, sometimes companies will send you games to review. And so I was like, oh, this is great. I'm getting free games. And so I just wrote for more and more of those different blogs online and sort of worked my way up. And then eventually I did some writing for a newspaper um, and then I had a little bit of stuff on TV and it was just one thing led to another. So it wasn't any big, you know, there was no big break. It was just a steady working at it. And although I didn't really write about games until I was probably like 25, so I was quite old, but I always liked writing. And I think looking back, I was the sort of writing I do now, describing things, is the sort of writing I used to like to do in school. So I think that's quite, that's quite a nice way to get into it. And it's the sort of thing that many people think, oh, I could never do it. But if, if you want to, it's completely possible to, to get that as a job. What are the most popular games right now? There's lots of different popular games. That's a really good question. But it kind of depends how old you are. So I think the, the popular games perhaps that you're playing would be different to if you've got older brothers or siblings or sisters. Um, but the ones that I've been writing about recently is a game you've probably heard of called Roblox. Um, and obviously on that, there's lots of different games. And I know that Adopt Me is one of the most popular Roblox games. Um, there's a, a game on the mobile phones that's just coming to console called Among Us, where you have to talk to each other and try and say who's tricking who. Um, and then games like Animal Crossing are also also really popular. I think anything at the moment where you can go and explore another world, everyone's really keen to do because they can get outside and you know be somewhere else when they're a bit stuck at home. All right, Andy. Well, we do have some digital leaders who unfortunately um, couldn't join us today. So I'm going to read some questions on their behalf. Question six is, can you tell us about your new book, Taming Gaming? That's a good question. I like talking about the book. So this is the book, Taming Gaming. Um, and we've been having lots of great questions from the kids today, but often parents have their own, que own questions. And often uh, for parents, games are a bit, maybe a bit scary, a bit kind of alien. And so this is a book for mums and dads 
from carers and guardians to, to, to teach them, you know, what what is a game? What's it like? How how can you have it in a healthy way? And if you see, if I put it up to the camera, it's in two halves. The first half is all the advice and it's got some nice pictures to, so people can um, learn about games. And then the second half are all lots of game suggestions that um, are presented a bit like recipes. So it's, a bit, it's like a recipe book for video games. And these are all games that um, parents often haven't heard of, but they're really great to play in the family. And there are some games in here that actually I like to get mums and dads and carers playing themselves so that they get a first-hand experience um, of what games they like to play. There's, here's one that I play with my kids, Tricky Towers. It's like Tetris, but it, you have to balance it with the real physics. So there you go. That's a great question. That's my book. Awesome, right, digital leaders, who thinks that they would like to buy a copy of Andy's book, Taming Gaming? Hands up. <laughs> and it's uh, available in all good bookshops? It is, and you can get it as an ebook. And also, actually, if you go to the website, the first chapter is there. And the most, the most exciting bit, <laughs> all the games are on the website. <laughs> Hi, Andy. What's the longest game you've played? That's another great question because, you know, some games can be really short. You can just finish them in half an hour. And some games, you know, can take loads of hours. And so actually on the database here, we can search. So you can search for games on the database and in lots of different ways, like what system it's on, what the age rating is. But one of the things you can do is to say how long it takes to play. So you can go up right through the hours. And if we pick the longest ones here, 100 hours or more, and click search you'll see that some of these games like Zelda Breath of the Wild or Flight Simulator, Pokemon Go, Elite, Kerbal Space Program, a lot of these are open-ended so that you can essentially keep going and keep exploring the world which means that um, you can play for hundreds of hours so those are the longest games um, hi Andy, what are the best games to play as, an, as a family? Yeah, that's a great question, but it kind of depends what your family is like. If you've got older brothers and sisters or younger brothers and sisters, you might play a different game. So again, on the database, we can go and do a search. So if we click search, and if we say we want to, to play games that are suitable for anyone seven and younger, um, I know that some of you are older than that, but that's a good range you know, in terms of what's suitable. Um, and then you'd need to pick what system you're on. Um, and I think a really important thing in the family is to play games all together. So if we say, let's find games that you can play with four people and then click search and then the most popular ones will be at the top here. So Among Us is a really good game to play in the family. Mario Kart is a great game because you can all race, race along together and it's not too hard. Um, what other games have we got here? Minecraft Dungeons is great because it's a bit of excitement and adventure, but in a Minecraft world, so that it's not too complex. So I think something that's accessible and that everyone can play is the best games to play in a family. Hi Andy, which console is the best and what should people consider when they are choosing what to buy? Yeah, another good question, because there are obviously lots of choices when it comes to how you play games. You might buy a dedicated console to play them on or you might play them on a computer or a smartphone or a tablet and I think the first thing to say is if you've got one of these already there are loads of really good games so you don't have to buy the latest one to play some great fun games and many of the games I play are actually on some of the older consoles so I still play some Xbox 360 and some Wii and some PlayStation 3 games that some people would think were quite old but on the database we've got this this page which is designed to help parents make that choice and one of the things I highlight is to say what you need to know are what are the exclusive games on different consoles so here we've got the list from the database for the Nintendo Switch which says these games if you want to play these games here then you need to buy a Switch because they're not on the other consoles they might be on PC or something but if you're choosing a console that's the one to go for and then PlayStation games if you wanted to play Fall Guys for instance or Astro's Playroom, then you, or Journey, then you'd need a PlayStation. And if you're choosing a console and you want to play Roblox, then the only console that currently plays Roblox is an Xbox. So that would be one of the ones which would mean you'd want to do that. Or maybe you want to play something like Zoo Tycoon. So understanding that is important, but also down the bottom of this page, I have a, have a list of how much things cost. 
and it can get quite expensive. So it's it's understanding what's best value. And there, you know, an older second-hand console can be just as much fun. And as I say, I still play lots of old games. And I think they're great. Right, the next question um, is one that I'm quite excited to find out about because um, not only do I teach computing at my school, uh, but I'm also in charge of the history and geography subjects and really enjoy those. And of course, I've got my big map behind me here. So I'd like to know, Andy, what's a good history or geography related game that we can play? Thank you, Mr. Fraser. Very good question. You've obviously thought about this. Um, so there's loads of games that use kind of history or geography as the place that you're playing, or sometimes they'll use kind of the, the nature of the land as part of, you know, the fun of exploring. And a couple of ones I could suggest. There's one called um, Bomber Crew, where you're in um, one of the world wars, World War II, um, and you are piloting a plane. So that's the kind of fun bit, and you kind of get, you get a sense of what it was like to be in that situation. But you also fly over the kind of terrain of Europe during that time and also you get to travel with these characters and hear some of their story of what it was like to what it was like to live through that era so that's a really good game in terms of history there's a bit of geography there as well um, and then there's a couple of good um, geography games uh, uh, this is maybe sort of the geography of the sea where like I said earlier you, you build a ship but then you have to explore the area so you have to design a ship that's going to be suitable for the environment that it's in. So if you're going out deep into sea, it needs to be much bigger, or maybe you're just exploring marshlands and so you create a much lighter craft. And then the last one is a really interesting one, but it's a bit hard to explain. It's called Everything, because it's a game where you you sort of become anything in the world. And you can be anything as tiny as a bit of pollen or a little seed on a plant, all the way up to like a piece of grass, a frog right here, a tree, a building, and even in a whole country or the whole planet. And so you get this, this view of reality from all these different perspectives, right from the planet down to a tiny little seed. So in terms of getting a sense of the scale of our geography, it's just a really amazing, unique game. So there you go. Perhaps you can have some fun with those. Hey Andy, my question is, what should you be aware of when playing video games? Yeah, that's a really good question because it's it's important to think about games, I think. We often just don't consider, you know, what we should think about beforehand. So some important things are before you start playing or how long do, how long do you want to play? Because games can go on and on and actually you can end up spending your whole evening or day playing. So I think it's important to think, I want to play this for maybe an hour, maybe half an hour, you can set a timer. I think it's important to look at the age rating of the game if it's got one to make sure that you know the content and maybe you could either look that up with your parent or if you know someone else who's played it you can ask about it and also it's important to know if it's an online game then your settings set up so that you know who you can and can't talk to so it's safe and you can just talk to friends that you know um, and then I think also it's important like I was saying with the Roblox games to understand, you know, what do I have to pay for? Is the game free? Do I pay for it before I start? Or will people be paying for stuff so they're better than me? So you can kind of understand, is it fair? Or, you know, how, how do I feel about it? And then after you finish playing, I think it's worth thinking, well, how do I feel? Did I enjoy that? Will I play it again? And actually take some time to make a decision rather than just playing more and more thinking, actually reflect on it and think, oh, that was fun. Yeah, I would do that again. Hi Andy, thank you for taking time out of your day for us. And I got a question. Um, like, what's the difference between Peggy 7 and Peggy 12? Because sometimes Peggy 12 um, is like not that violent. Yeah, that's a good question because Peggy ratings are a really helpful way for anyone to understand what's in the game before we play it. And so every game is examined by like an official Peggy rater who plays the game and looks at video content. Um, so that they can decide what that rating is. And so one way to look at this, if we could go into the database and say, well, let's search for Peggy 7 rated games and we could find some, because that will help us understand, well, why is it rated at that, at that particular age? So let's just scroll down and see what we find. Yeah, so Minecraft's a good example of Peggy 7. So in this game, it will be a Peggy 7 for different reasons. And so it will get the age, not just for violence, like you said, but also if it's scary, um, if it's got, um, any kind of bad language in it 
or if it's a bit violent as well. And so Minecraft, you can hit things and you do have swords and bows and arrows, but it's not very realistic. And so they say, well, that's that's not very real violence. And so therefore it's just a Peggy 7. But if you we went to a game, I'm going to look up the game Fortnite, because that's quite a well-known um, game that I know is Peggy 12. So if we go to that on the database, we can then see that it has a little description, I think. So it says this game has received a Peggy 12 for frequent mild violence. And so it says it's not suitable if you're under 12. And what that means is that compared to a Minecraft, the, the shooting and the hitting in Fortnite, the people look more like real people. And also the way that those people respond when they're hit, it looks a little bit more like real life. So eventually they run out of energy and they fall down on the ground. And that means that that's a Peggy 12. And so that's the difference between Peggy 7 and Peggy 12. It's a great question. Okay, we've got another question from one of our digital leaders um, who couldn't make it today. Um, which games can you play um, where you have to do lots of reading or maybe games where you don't really have to do any reading? Yes, yeah, so that's another good question. It's something I'm asked about quite a bit by parents. Um, and you know, you could just think, what, what's the game like? And then make a guess. But in the database, we've got a special field that tells us whether the game has lots of reading or not. It's in this accessibility filters section and it has a reading level. So we could look at games that have lots of reading. So extensive, complex reading. If we put that in and click search, and let's, let's put a Peggy rating in too. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see if there are lots of lot, many games. So just two games that are Peggy 7 that have lots of reading. So these are both kind of narrative games. Heaven's Vault's a game where you actually put together a language that you find in the ground and um, is a lot of fun. Um, and we could then change that search to say, what about games if we don't want to do a lot of reading? We've read all day at school or whatever. We finished our books and we think, actually, we just want to play something where we don't have to read lots of words. So here we are. You've got lots of sort of puzzle games. So these are games that you play and they tell a story, but they don't do it with words. They'll tell a story with interactions on the screen. And one final thing we could do in our search, we take that off. We could think, OK, well, we're not reading, but we want to have games where all the spoken words are actually voiced by somebody so we can just hear them. And if we do that search, then we'll get another set of games that while we're playing, the game itself narrates and tells us the story while we're actually playing it. So there you go. There's a few different ways to find games on the database that either do or don't include a lot of reading. Oh, that accessibility uh, search function is fantastic. Hi, Andy, and my question is, what is your favourite platformer type game? That's a great question. Actually, on the database, it's interesting. We don't talk about platformer games because we find that lots of mums and dads and carers sort of say, what do you mean a platformer? So we'll say, a running and jumping game but in the search we do use that phrase and so we have a platform game here if we search i can find some and it will jog my memory but there's a couple that i know uh, that i really like a lot um i wonder if they're going to pop up as we scroll down there's lots of games have platforming in them so super mario odyssey i really like that's one obviously with mario and it's really big and there's a big open world to explore and there's lots of platforming but this is the one that's my favorite a game called New Super Lucky's Tale and you play this fox who can burrow underground and you have to take on the cats to try and find all the pages for your book and it's just a really lovely little sort of story but actually even as a grown-up <laughs> I really enjoyed it and I, I spent the time finding every page that took me probably about 30 hours to finish that game but that's a lot of fun. Hi Andy, have you ever created a game or can you even recommend a site where I can create my own game? That's another great question because I think that's one of the lovely things about video games is that we can make them as well as play them and on the um, website on the database I have a page in these lists all about games that let you make games while you're playing or just kind of tools to make games so if we switch to it make your own video games it's a list that we put together with the National Video Game Museum and there's lots of examples here of really nice ways that you can make games. Some of them are quite complicated. You go down here to Super Mario Maker, you can make Mario levels. But you have to make sure that you can make all the jumps because you have to finish the level before you can upload it. So that's quite complicated. But then there's simpler versions of that. For example, 
this Mario Kart game, you have an actual kart and you make the level by putting things in your house and then you drive around and the kart remembers it. And actually what you're doing there is designing your own Mario Kart level. And of course, Roblox is a game where you can make your own games if you've got a PC and you can use those kind of tools. But there's all sorts of different level makers as well. So some of these games down here, like Conduct Together or Hidden Through Time, are little puzzle games that let you create your own puzzles. And when you've done that, you can then share them with your friends. And that's a great way to get started. And many people who are now professionally making games started off like this. So it's a great question. Hello, hello Andy Robertson. Can you, do you have a surprising fact about video games? That's a great question. There's lots of surprising facts about video games because they're kind of like a new thing um, and are changing very quickly. And lots of things about them are quite surprising. One of them is how much money they make. So video games make as much money as films and music industry put together. And currently that's 151 billion dollars in last year <laughs> so that's i think that's pretty surprising i can't even imagine that amount of money and then a second fact which i think is quite surprising is how old is the average person who plays a game so we think that games are mostly played by kind of children and younger people but actually the average person who plays a game is 34 years old which i think is pretty surprising as well Okay, Andy, uh, final question for you. What do you think the future of gaming will look like? Yeah, the future of gaming, that's something I often get asked about. And usually we think about what new technology, like PlayStation 6, or like what's the Xbox we're gonna have in five years time, or VR. But actually, I think the future of games is more in the inventive different stories that people are gonna create. And so probably, your class of digital leaders here may play a role in creating what's next. And that's what is really exciting about games because it's a new media, a new way to tell stories and to create spaces and experiences. It creates lots of opportunities for new people to come in and have their say and have their voice heard in ways that are really unexpected. So I look forward to being completely surprised by how the video games turn out. Well, Andy, thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions today. Digital leaders, did you find that interesting? Yes. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Of course you've got that yeah. interesting. Question. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you for all your absolutely amazing questions. It's been really good fun. Brilliant. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, please check out the Family Video Game Database at taminggaming.com and Andy's new book, which is available now. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. Andy. Bye. Andy. Bye. 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 Bye.